Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. The Signal Oil Program. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, murder has a signature. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Presently I'll tell you of nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. But first, a little boy wants me to ask a favor of you, a dime. He'd be here himself to ask you, but this little fellow is crippled in bed. And your dime is to help him get well, so someday he may walk again. You see, he's one of the 19,000 Americans, mostly children, who were stricken last year by infantile paralysis. Few homes can afford the long, costly care required by this dread disease. But thanks to the dimes contributed through last year's March of Dimes campaign, sponsored by President Roosevelt, more and more victims of infantile paralysis will walk again. Today starts the nationwide 1945 drive to replenish this important fund. It's your opportunity to do what you can to control this crippling disease, which, what for the hand of providence, might have stopped at your home. Send your dime or more, if you can, to President Roosevelt or your local chapter of the March of Dimes. Don't put it off. The need is now. And now, The Whistler. It was an old house set back in the trees a little way from the lake, and it had a miserly look about it. You could almost tell that its owner was wealthy and cranky and miserly and happy in her self-pity. And all the loneliness of her own life, she took pleasure in passing on to her only companion, her servant, Martha. Martha! Martha, where are you? Martha, do this. Martha, do that. Always Martha. So there you are. Didn't you hear me calling you? What are you doing in the kitchen? Breakfast dishes. Breakfast dishes what? Breakfast dishes. Miss Brewer. That's better. You haven't made my room yet, and you know very well that's to be tidied before you touch a thing. Another thing. I know very well you heard me calling. Why didn't you answer me? I didn't hear you. One of your moods again, eh? Well, how long is it going to last this time? Oh, never mind. Take this envelope. I want you to row across the lake and place these securities in the bank. Row across? Be careful with them. They're worth a great deal of money. I want a bank receipt, too. Can you remember that? But it's three miles across the lake. I'll not have you wasting the motorboat gasoline. You're big and strong, and the trip won't hurt you a bit. Oh, just a minute, Martha. Yes? That dress. Where did you get it? This? Yes, that. It's one of mine, isn't it? It's an old one. I didn't think you'd care. I do care. I've told you before that I'll not have you wearing my clothes until I give them to you. Go to your room and take it off. Never any money to spend on myself. Because you're a fool with money. You with your cheap perfume and penny jewelry and frilly shirtwaist. Trying to play the lady. It's a good thing I put a stop to it. I've earned my money here. I've got a right to do what I want with it. Martha, I promised your people I'd look after you. Why 
knew how giddy you are. Your wages are well invested. But I want pretty things while I can enjoy them. Not when I'm old. Why, you're only ten years younger than I am, you fool. I am nearly sixty. Now go to your room. Take off my dress. No. Take care, Martha. I've had enough of this. You've had enough. How about me? I'm sick of being treated like dirt under your feet. Go to your room. And I'm sick of working for an old cheat who steals my wages. <gasps> Martha, you didn't think I'd dare slap you, did you? If you only knew how I've wanted to do that. How I've dreamed of doing it. How dare you? How dare you? It was good. It felt good. The police will know about this, you ungrateful woman. The police? <laughs> no. Nor anyone else. You won't get a chance to tell anyone. Not even see anyone. You can't keep me here a prisoner, a captive in my own house. I can't. And who would know? You have no friends. Nobody visits you from one year's end to another. Even the people in the village stay clear of your nasty tongue. You dare to do that to your mistress? Mistress? I'll show you who's mistress. <gasps> my glasses. You've broken my glasses. Yes. Do you think you can get help now? You're half blind without them. It's eight miles by road to the village. You'd be lost in the swamps in ten minutes. Yes, I am mistress now. Well, at long last, Martha, you've summoned up the courage to do what you've wanted to do for so many years. You're a little surprised at the success of it, how easy it was. It's a pleasure to see her cringe before you, call you my dear, ask sweetly when she wants something, and then there's so much money here, enough to buy you all those things you've dreamed about. Martha? Oh, so there you are, Martha. Where have you been? Marketing. Where do you think? Well, you've been so long, and it's cold in this room. Oh, so cold. Might have left the fire for me, Martha. Do be considerate, my dear. Considerate? When were you ever considerate of me? My back used to ache from breakfast to bedtime, and a lot you cared. Oh, it's different now, isn't it? Oh, it's cold, Martha. <sighs> well, wait till I get my things off and I'll make tea. You and your back. Oh, thank you, my dear. Quite a change has come over the old lady, hasn't there? My, what a sweet thing she's getting to be. I've been thinking, Martha. So she's been thinking. No, I mean it. That lovely dinner dress of mine, it's not old, not really old at all. You can have it. I want you to have it. Second-hand stuff again, eh? No, thanks. I'm not having any. Now, look here. Let me show you something. Well? You bought that in the village? Yes. That and this and this and this. All of them. They're pretty, aren't they? Isn't that stealing, Martha? You have no money. You must have been in my cash box. Stealing? You talk about stealing when you've stolen months, years of my life. This stuff isn't all, either. There's lots of other things up in my room. Shall I show them to you? No, Martha. Well, why don't you say something? Well, there's nothing to say. If those few things will make you happy, then I'm glad. I want you to be happy, my dear. <laughs> you old hypocrite. You don't fool me a bit. What you wouldn't give to have the police here now. How you misjudge me. Is that a letter there? Letter? Yes, you have a letter. I suppose you want me to read it to you. Please. I'm surprised somebody thinks enough of you to write. My dear Aunt Bessie. Aunt Bessie? I'm motoring south tomorrow with my wife, Lillian. It's been so many years since we were last together, I thought I might stop on my way and renew a long, neglected acquaintanceship. We should arrive sometime Friday evening. Uh, affectionately, Harvey. My nephew, Harvey. Why, I haven't seen him since he was a small boy. What does he want? You read the letter, Martha. He wants to see his aunt. Today is Friday. Well? Tonight, Martha. He'll be here tonight. Tonight? <laughs> Come, my fine lady. Put on your pretties. You must look your handsomest when my nephew arrives. It's my money. I haven't really stolen from you. You can't do anything to me. Stolen from me? Of course you haven't, my dear. 
My poor woman, didn't I tell you I wanted you to be happy? You mean you're not going to do anything about it? Well, it's all unimportant, Martha, as viewed in contrast to a greater crime. Crime? What crime? Kidnapping, Martha. Kidnapping? You held me against my will for the purpose of obtaining money. That, under the law, constitutes kidnapping. You've held me in my own home makes not the slightest difference. I didn't hold you. I didn't. You know the penalty, Martha? You're trying to scare me. Death, Martha. <laughs> no, you can't. Your nephew. I'll explain to him. Oh, come, my dear. It was inevitable, you know. Don't look so unhappy. <laughs> it isn't often I have guests, my dear. Fill the sherry decanters on the sideboard. Bring out the linens, the brewer's silver. For tonight, I entertain. You can't. I won't let you. Too late, my dear. Imagine my nephew wanting to visit me after all this time. Ironical, isn't it? Eighteen years. Eighteen years? Then he wouldn't know you, recognize you, would he? Well, perhaps not. He could scarcely be expected to, I suppose, but... Martha, what are you thinking? Nothing, Miss Brewer. Nothing at all. You are listening to The Whistler, brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company, marketers of famous Signal Gasoline, your best buy today. Remember to let every go signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. situation is a little more serious than Martha ever dreamed it might be, isn't it? Old Miss Brewer's nephew coming, and you, Martha, threatened with prison or worse. And there's not much to do about it. Or is there? Harvey will be here soon. Even now, he and his wife are driving over the muddy road up to the house. Look. Look, Harvey. Is that it through the trees? Must be. It's the only house we've seen for miles. And there's a light in the window. Oh, thank goodness. This is the loneliest, most dismal place yeah, I've ever... Yeah, that wind. Looks like rain. At least we beat that. I only hope she lets us in. What do you mean? Why shouldn't she let us in? Oh, I don't know. But she's a nutty old dame. I gather she doesn't think too much of me. I used to write her once in a while when I was younger, but she never once answered a letter. Well, then if you haven't even heard from her for 18 years, why should she be the guardian of your money? Well, after all, she's my only living relative... I'm hers. Okay, here we are. I'll pull in under this tree. Not too far from the porch. It's starting to rain. Okay, Lillian, you run for it. I'll bring the bags. Well, hurry up. You'll get wet. And there's no bell, Har. Never mind. Uh, that wind. Feel how the house shakes. It's old. You can see that. Hey, Listen. Yeah, somebody's coming. Did you close the windows in the car? Yeah, I did. Well, please knock again, Harv. I'm cold. Well, I tell you, I heard somebody. Yes? Well, how do you do? I'm Harvey Brewer. I know. Come in. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Follow me. This must be it, Harv. In here, please. Look. Look, Harv, a fire. Oh. Doesn't it look wonderful? Wonderful as heaven. Thought I never would get warm again. Suppose I can leave the bags here for the time being. That'll be all right, won't it, miss? What do you want here? What? Oh, oh of course. Uh, please tell Miss Brewer that her nephew and his wife are here. Her nephew, Harvey. I'm Miss Brewer. You? What's the matter? <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> How stupid of me. I should have known. I'm sorry, frightfully sorry. This is, uh, this is my wife, Lillian. How do you do, Miss Brewer? Why have you come? Why? Well, well to see you, to pay you a visit. After all, you are my aunt, you know. I... Well, I must say, I'd hardly expected this reception. What did you expect? Really, my dear Aunt Bessie, uh, if I may call you Aunt Bessie... You may not. You're not wanted here. Well, I'm sorry. I, I only thought that after all these years... That... I'm quite satisfied not to have any visitors. 
I want to be alone. Surely you don't mean that you'd you'd turn us out on a night like this after we've come all this way. I didn't ask you to come, but now you're asking us to leave. Is that it? Well, as long as we understand each other now, we might as well settle our business oh, now. Oh, Lillian. Business? What business? Go on, tell her, Harvey. Well, uh, it, it's about my money. I want it, Aunt Bessie. Money? Uh, you, you came here for money? I... Well, I didn't think it'd be necessary to have to come to the point so so abruptly, but yes, I need money. I must have money. No, I I can't give you any. But after all, Aunt Bessie, it's my money, you know. You're simply holding it in trust for me. I know it's not due for another year, but the fact of the matter is I'm broke and I need it now. What's that got to do with me? Oh, it can't make any possible difference to you whether you pay it now or a year from now. And it makes a great deal of difference to me. How much is it? How much? You know very well how much it is, Miss Brewer. Ten thousand. I, uh, I can't remember everything. I'm not well at all. Uh, you've got me all upset coming here. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Aunt Bessie. We didn't want to disturb you. Look, just write a check and we'll be gone. A check? Yes. I can't write you a check. I, I haven't got that much money in the bank. No, and I won't have either for a week, a, a couple of weeks. Not for two weeks, huh? We can wait, Harvey. Wait here? You can't wait here? We're broke, Aunt Bessie. Look, we're really broke. We've no other place to go. Not even enough gas to get there if we did. Tonight, then. Tonight's as long as you can stay. Do you hear? I'll give you some cash tomorrow. And then you've got to go. I can write you a check. Are, um, securities any good to you? Securities? Your securities? Yes. Yes, of course they are. You really mean this, Aunt Bessie? Wait. Well, this is a worthwhile trip, I... Wait a minute, Lillian. There might be enough here. Enough? Well, I should say there is. Yes. Yes, of course. Here. Take these two. What? They're marked $5,000 each. They're bank stock. Really, Aunt Bessie, this is awfully good of you. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. They'll have to be endorsed. Made over to you, you know, Harvey. Oh, oh naturally. Uh, uh, do you mind, Aunt Bessie? Look, uh... Here's a pen. Endorsed? Yeah, of course, just sign your name. Best Brewer on the back. And give me the pen. Here you are. <laughs> As if you didn't know. <laughs> there. You both leave early in the morning. <laughs> gladly. Believe me, gladly. And that's the last cent you'll get. If you ever come here again, ask me for more, I'll... Well, I'll disinherit you. Yes, that's what I'll do. Now I'll show you to your room. Well, things have taken quite a turn. All Harvey wanted was money, and Bess Brewer signed over $10,000 worth of bonds to him. Or did she? And what about Martha? But then Harvey doesn't know anything about Martha. And Martha doesn't really know much about Harvey and Lillian. Not enough, I'm afraid. Asleep, Harvey? Ooh, oh, no. She's very rich, isn't she? Uh, a million, anyway. Uh, maybe more. That's money, Harvey. Yes, it is. Harvey. Hmm? Did you know before tonight that you were in her will? No. No, not until she made that threat about cutting me off. You might get it all, Harvey. There's no other relative. A million or more, you said. Oh, no. <laughs> Lay that pipe down, Lil. <laughs> the old girl's good for another 20 years. Now go on and go to sleep. 20 years. Good night, Lil. Uh, $10,000 won't keep us forever, Harv. No. We'll be broke again soon. I suppose. But we'll have one swell time getting that way. But I don't like to be broke, Harvey. You know that. Now, wait a minute. Are you... are you threatening to leave me again? I'm only warning you, Harv. You know how I feel. That's why we came down here. Oh, is money all you ever think of? You married me with your eyes open, Harvey. I warned you then. Mm, I know. I had enough of my inheritance to keep any ordinary couple happy for a lifetime. How we went through it all, I don't know. <laughs> I told you I was expensive. I don't plan to change. 
But I'll stay with you as I promised, as long as we can live like human beings. Like millionaires, you mean? Mm-hmm. And you might be a millionaire if you had her money. But, Lillian, what can I do? Don't you know? Oh, good night, Harvey. Oh, you're a spoiled brat, Lil. Gosh, I often wonder why I love you. But there's nothing, nothing I wouldn't do for you. You believe that, don't you? Mm. There's nobody in the house but the three of us. I know. Just you and I and the old lady upstairs. Well? Just the three of us, Harv. All right, all right. What about it? Nobody knows we came here tonight. No, nobody knows. Good night, Harvey. Lil. Twenty years is such a long time. Lil. Oh. You know you always get your way with me. Yes, she always gets her way with you, doesn't she, Harvey? And so you didn't get much sleep that night, did you? There was too much to do. And you had to get away too early in the dark, rain or no rain. Back in the city, you think it over and try to figure if you've forgotten anything. And you wait for the news. Uh-huh. Well, it's in the paper. Already? Found her floating in the lake. They're not sure whether it's suicide or just what it is. Come on, read it. No picture? Not important enough for the city newspapers. Too far away to rate the front page. Well, what do you think? We're all right. Yeah. There's not a thing to connect us. Not a wrinkle left in the bed, not a fingerprint I didn't wipe off. We're all right. I found that letter that we wrote to her. We just simply weren't there Friday, Lil. Well, that's that. What about the securities? No, nothing doing. I tried again, but the banks won't touch them without her lawyer's endorsement. But it'll be a year or more before they settle her estate. I know. What are we going to live on in the meantime? Well, certainly her lawyer will verify her signature. I don't like it, Lil. All we have to remember is that we weren't there Friday. It was a month earlier when she paid you off. He'll never know. How could he know? I tell you, we're all right. <laughs> Yes, everything's all right, Harvey. Stop worrying. Just run down to your aunt's lawyer's office and get his endorsement for the money. Then wait and see what happens. Who knows what good luck may come. May I offer my condolences on your aunt's passing, Mr. Brewer? It was a great shock to me. Well, yes, I imagine you knew her better than I did. Perhaps. She wasn't a very friendly woman, but she was a remarkable one. And now you said you had some business with me. Uh, yes. You see, about a month before my aunt's death, I, uh, I happened to stop down there to see her. Oh? Uh -huh. And, uh, she gave me these bank securities, $10,000 worth, the money she was holding in trust for me. But I thought... Yes, that... I, I know. It wasn't due yet, but she said she wanted me to have it anyway. And now the banks tell me that your endorsement is needed in order to cash them. Yes. That's an old routine arrangement I had with her. You just let me see them? Oh, yes, of course. Right here. Thank you. Hmm. Let me see. Uh, Mr. Brewer, you got these securities from your aunt? Yes, I, I just told you. Quite, quite. And uh, this is her signature? That's right, as you can see. You were in your aunt's presence when this endorsement was made? You saw her sign her name? Yes. Of course. We both did. I see. It may mean nothing at all. I hope for your sake it doesn't. But this is something I think the police should know about. You, you mean the, uh, the securities? Yes. And uh, the signature. You see, Mr. Brewer, foul play is suspected in your aunt's death. 
The only clue the police have so far is a set of tire tracks found in the mud outside the house. Evidently made the night she died. But, uh, I, uh, I, I don't understand. No, you wouldn't, I'm sure. But you see, Mr. Brewer, this couldn't possibly be your aunt's signature. Because in spite of her intelligence and wealth, your aunt never went to school. She never learned to write even her own name. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's a gas-stretching tip nine out of ten drivers don't know about. Actual tests prove that by keeping your motor in better condition, Signal four-star motor oil not only assures longer motor life, but also helps gasoline go farther. You see, solvent refining, the latest, most costly process known to oil engineers, gives Signal four-star motor oil seven-way protection. Its pure paraffin base is the finest lubricant money can buy. Its triple-strength film clings to running parts and stands up longer. In coldest winter, it flows freely, yet retains its body when your motor's hot. Because of solvent refining, Signal Four Star Motor Oil forms less carbon, keeps your motor cleaner, smoother, getting maximum power from every ration drop of gasoline. So you profit in two ways, in longer motor life and longer gasoline mileage when your car's protected by Signal Four Star Motor Oil. If it's been a thousand miles or two months since your last oil drain, it's time for a change to solvent refined Signal Four Star Motor Oil. See your friendly Signal gasoline dealer, your neighborhood headquarters for Signal products and fine quality automotive accessories. And now, back to the Whistler. <laughs> So, Harvey had nothing to worry about. Nothing but the electric chair. And Lillian, who had to have money to live like a human being, will spend the rest of her life behind bars. Yes, the tire tracks convicted them, of course. That was one clue they overlooked. And it was enough to prove that they were there that rainy night. If only you hadn't tried to cash those securities, Harvey. The securities that first pointed suspicion at you. Now they'll hang you for the wrong murder, Harvey. They'll hang you for your aunt's murder, when actually you killed Martha, the housekeeper, and dumped her body in the lake. Yes, but they haven't found her body yet, Harvey. Martha was the one who killed Aunt Bessie and threw her body in the lake. But you'll never be able to prove that now. Maybe if Martha had lived, you could have gotten out of it somehow. But not now. It was all so unnecessary, too. When you killed Martha, your aunt was already dead. And by the terms of her will, you had already inherited all of her money. Over a million dollars. Too bad, Harvey. Too bad. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, the Signal Oil Program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Signal Oil Program is broadcast for your entertainment by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer, who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil Program, produced by George W. Allen, with story by Louis Estee, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline.
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.